Right then guys, here I am for one of the follow-up videos to my all 10 seasons of career mode video on F1 2021. On F1 2020, I spent a season with Mahavir Ragunathan in my team and that was a laugh. In fairness, he was almost acceptable in the first race as he finished 5th in the opening round, albeit with the help of the pre-season boosts, along with the facility upgrades, collectively taking him up from 50 to 76 overall. Without those pre-season boosts, down at 65 or 66 overall, he simply couldn't cut it in F1. He just about scraped a points finish in Austria, and even then, that 10th place was taken thanks to a fair amount of luck, and even then, he still made it hard for himself. Of course, the low point was in Italy, where he buckled under the pressure and crashed. Those were the highs and lows, and I'll link to that video in the top right of the screen if you want to watch it in full. In F1 2021 though, the lowest rated F2 driver is Roy Nassani. I wanted to give Nassani the best chance possible of winning an F1 driver's title, so I signed him just after we had a rule change in the career mode, which meant my team's car was dominant, given that I retained a fully upgraded car, whereas everyone else's wasn't even close. Nassani wasn't competing at his lowly 57 overall, since the facility upgrades I had meant he was boosted up to 72. Also, pre-season, the activities give out really generous perks, far better than you get once the season starts, meaning Nissani entered the first round of the season in Bahrain at 82 overall, which interestingly, is the same as Kimi Raikkonen was by this point. In Bahrain for the first round of the season, Nissani was on pole position by nearly a second over Perez in second, and then Norris for Mercedes qualified in third. Everyone else, including Verstappen in 4th, Gasly in 5th, Sainz in 6th and Hamilton down in 7th, were all over 1.1 seconds back. That set the tone for the race as by the end of the opening lap, Nassani had pulled out a clear and sizeable gap that got bigger and bigger as the race went on. That says a lot about how dominant our car is though, since I deliberately didn't qualify as I didn't want to get in Nassani's way, but also, it's another way of showing just how quick our car is, but also how slow Nassani was. That's because whilst the Israeli may have won the race with a 41 second margin to Verstappen in third, I ended in second place having started in 20 second, and I was only 10 seconds back on my teammate come the end. I also set the fastest lap of the race and consistently set faster lap times than Nassani as much as a second a lap quicker. Anyone can be quick with those pre-season boosts that give the driver a one race shot of 10 to every stat. Even Ragunathan did okay with that helping hand. So the real acid test was in the next round at Imola when Nassani entered at 73 overall. Even despite that, Nassani still took pole position in a rain-affected qualifying session, narrowly pipping both Mercedes drivers with Hamilton ahead of his new teammate. Initially, it looked like the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix was going to be a repeat of the Bahrain GP since Nissani pulled away from the rest of the pack immediately. It wasn't even Hamilton who was his closest competitor though as Norris took second place from his teammate off the starting grid. Hamilton then ended up pitting for a new front wing, as did Verstappen as well. As Imola's tendency to create coming togethers in this game combined with the fragile front wings in F1 2021, meant that soon Nissani's only meaningful threats were me and Lando Norris. Halfway into the race though, with Nissani holding a 10 second lead over Norris and 21 seconds over me in third, he span all by himself at the Toza hairpin. He didn't sustain any damage, but by the time he turned around and got back going again, Norris was 6 seconds up the road and I was almost within striking distance. I was already faster than Asani in Bahrain, never mind the significantly worse version of him we're seeing in Imola. So it didn't take me long to catch up to the back of him and then it was a simple DRS aided pass on my teammate to overtake him. Despite Lando Norris's almost maxed out driver rating, the difference between our car and Mercedes car was so vast that I was easily able to clear him down the start finish straight to take the race lead. Two laps later, Nassani pulled off the same move I did, but 
just as we got into a 1-2 position for the team, I was forced to retire with just 4 laps of the race left to go due to a terminal mechanical failure. So Roy Nassani went on to take his second race win in F1 with Lando Norris in second and Sergio Perez the unexpected and very lucky final podium finisher. More importantly, well sort of more importantly given what this video is about, me and Nassani were the only drivers to get into the 1 minute 14s. I set a best time of 1 minute 14.3 which is half a second quicker than Nassani's best effort and nearly a second faster than everyone else. I then took part in the Portuguese Grand Prix before simulating the races. Simply put, Nassani was the fastest in qualifying again by 3 tenths over Perez in second, and then he went on to win the race. That's really all there is to know along with the fact that I climbed up from 22nd to 2nd and was only 8 seconds back come the end and Pierre Gasly joined us on the podium. Yet again, I set the fastest race lap as I was the only driver to get into the 1 minute 15s with Nassani 4 tenths slower in the low 1 minute 16s, whilst everyone else was in the 1 minute 17s at best. Once I started simulating the races, I was consistently beating Nassani, but then the inevitable happened. About halfway into the season, the top teams caught up to us in terms of car development, and that soon meant both of us were struggling to score points on a regular basis. Nissani went from early season championship leader to 7th in the overall standings, which isn't too bad given that it was a full 23 race long season and he was by far the worst driver competing in F1. The thing is though, Roy Nassani isn't actually the worst driver in the game. Mahavir Ragunathan wasn't even the worst driver in F1 2020 despite what I thought when I made that video on him last year. In actual fact, if you aren't able to, or more likely refuse, to sign a driver during the negotiation window, then you are given the emergency backup replacement. A fictional driver called Aaron Barnes. At their worst, Ragunathan and Nissani dip into the 40s in terms of their overall rating. Barnes is a 25 overall driver and whilst I didn't try him out in F1 2020 since I didn't know he was in that game, we'll see how he stacks up in F1 2021. I reloaded the game save I used for the Nasani career and repeated that season you just saw which means we can fairly compare Roy Nasani to Aaron Barnes. There are some differences in terms of who's driving for which team but crucially Red Bull and Mercedes have the same driver lineups and we still have the same colossal car advantage at the start of the season. Nissani got pole position and won all of the opening three races but Barnes, he started off his time in F1 qualifying in 5th place, over half a second slower than Norris on pole and 1.2 seconds slower than Nissani's lap time when he took part in the Bahrain Grand Prix. Verstappen and Norris pitted earlier than myself and Barnes to give us a temporary 1-2, but when I say temporary, I don't mean for a lap or two, I mean temporary as in about 35 seconds, since Barnes buckled under the pressure and span out from first place. That error dropped him down to 7th before even entering the pits, and then once he'd done that, he was running down in 16th albeit with some of the drivers still ahead of him needing to stop themselves. Most of the places Barnes made up were through others pitting or retiring. Notably Norris and Leclerc didn't make the checker flag just as they did during the Sarnies attempt, the difference being that whether or not they finished made no difference to how well Nassani did because he won the Grand Prix, he beat everyone on raw pace anyway, but in Barnes's case without those retirements he would have finished two places lower down than he did. Barnes did make a couple of on-track overtakes though, that said they weren't exactly confidence inspiring since his car looked very nervy when he was passing Sonoda down the back straight, but at least he kept it pointing in the right direction this time. In the end he recovered to 6th place and in terms of ultimate lap time he was the second fastest one stopper out there, but consistency is his big problem. Also, his pass on the Ferrari of Giovinazzi to take that 6th position was dubious since 
He locked up under breaking for turn one and hit Giovinazzi's front right end plate. In fairness, Antonio did turn into him and the Italian had plenty of space on the outside to delay his turn, but ultimately, it was a clumsy move by Barnes that only stuck because the Ferrari got damaged that forced the car into the pit lane. In a wet qualifying at Imola, the only driver to get the better of Barnes was Norris and by a quarter of a second. A better launch by Barnes meant he took first place, but unlike Nassani, he wasn't able to open up and extend out a lead. That said, he was able to keep the likes of Norris and Verstappen behind him for lap after lap after lap. That was the status quo up until Verstappen successfully overcut Norris for second place, but staying out one lap longer wasn't enough for him to clear Barnes as well. What eventually put an end to Barnes' stranglehold on first place was contact between him and Verstappen as they went side by side into the Tamburello chicane. To be fair, that didn't really matter because Barnes then spanned at the same corner on the same lap in exactly the same fashion that Nassani did just a few seconds after that contact with Verstappen. The identical spins for Nassani and Barnes isn't a coincidence as you'll know if you've ever restarted a career mode race or, as I have done here, reloaded an old game save. A lot of things get secretly predetermined by the game including who spins and when and where. Also, retirements remain a constant and so I knew I wasn't going to make it to the end of the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix since those are also locked in by the game in advance. Anyway, the contact with Verstappen meant Barnes needed to pit for a new front wing and that lengthy process meant he was spat back out in 20th place. Karma struck Verstappen a couple of laps later though since he went side by side with Norris into the same chicane, but this time he was the one to sustain damage and so he pitted for a new front wing as well. The difference though is that Verstappen opted for a set of mediums which were taken through to the end of the race. Whereas Barnes fitted a new set of softs, climbed up from 20th to 10th, but then had to stop again as those tyres couldn't take him to the chequered flag. So then he stopped for a third time, took on more softs, rejoined the race down in 20th again, and so he had to do all that work for a second time, and with only 8 laps to go. That meant he needed to average more than one overtake per lap just to even score a point. Amazingly enough, he actually got close to doing that as he finished the race in 11th. Although you've got to remember that my retirement gifted him one of those positions. Even still, he was making overtaking moves rapidly, which is more of a statement about how good our car is rather than his own ability. The final race I completed myself was the Portuguese Grand Prix, and it looked promising to begin with, with fourth place in qualifying for Barnes. He wasn't quite on a par with Norris and both Red Bulls, but he was clearly the next best driver out there, excluding me obviously. What killed the race for him though was his decision to stop twice, and that wasn't for damage. He, of his own volition, decided to carry out a two-stop strategy. That was a bad idea, but also one that came from nowhere. No one pitted twice in the Nissani career mode race here, but this time Barnes did, along with both Alfa Tauri and Ferrari drivers, and I genuinely don't know why. It's a shame though, since on pure pace, Aaron Barnes should have finished fifth based on what we saw early in the race, and to be fair, he was still the highest finishing two-stopper, although that's only 10th place overall, and what you've got to remember is that he's got what is by far and away the fastest car. Weirdly, his best result came in a simulated Azerbaijan Grand Prix where he finished in 5th place, making me kind of wish I actually took part in that race just to see if he would have done that in actuality. Not only was that his best race result in F1, it was his final ever points finish. And so, across the entire season he scored 23 points and ended 12th in the Drivers Championship. Roy Nassani, who let's not forget is the lowest rated real world driver in the game and the worst one you can get under normal circumstances, scored 167 points and finished 7th in the point standings. That means he beat the likes of Leclerc, Sainz and Hamilton. 
Barnes didn't achieve anything like that and that's how low the standard of driver goes in this game. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did be sure to leave a like, comment down below and I'll see you guys for one last video from me from my time playing the My Team Career Mode in F1 2021.